Welcome to Spend Art Friday with me. My name is Anna Semerjev and I'm an art painter and an art teacher by profession. Right now we are at my studio in Myrankolo and here's where it all started when I began thinking about what we could create with you today. In my own paintings I use oil colors and acrylics. Recently, I've started thinking a lot about how I could replace these materials with more environmentally friendly options. And that's why I decided that today we would just be using berries and coffee. Even the smallest kids can try out some magic tricks with them. <laughs> All right, now we can start. So today we'll be using coffee. It can be filter coffee or this instant coffee. We'll also be using berries, lingon berries and bilberries. They can be either fresh or frozen berries from a bag. Blueberry soup is also okay if you can't get hold of berries. Then we need lemon or lime and baking soda. Ideally, you'd have several painting brushes, but just one will do as well. A pencil, an eraser, masking tape and a black lining marker like this one here, or a regular marker. You should pay special attention to the paper you choose today. Regular copying paper is too thin. Your paper doesn't have to be expensive watercolor paper, but still a bit thicker than regular copying paper. Today we'll start by creating a map like this. I poured the lingonberries and the bilberries straight from the freezer back into these glasses. All you need to do is use a fork to crush them. As soon as you start mashing them, the liquid inside the berries starts to come out. And that's the watercolor we'll be using today. Let's cut the lemon into a few slices, so that it's easy to squeeze some lemon juice from it. As I said earlier, we'll be doing some magic. I already put the baking soda into this glass jar. We need baking soda because it's an alkaline substance. Whereas lemon is acidic. So that's why we need this. Write down what you'll put in each spot so you can later see how lemon or baking soda has affected the lingonberry or bilberry. Take a pen and write down lingonberry, lemon, then write baking soda, then write lingonberry, let's put bilberry juice into all these spots we have written things. They don't have to be perfect circles, just spread some bilberry juice here. There. Here on the second row the idea is to dilute the bilberry juice with water. And here, in this last pot, you add some more water, so that it's almost completely water, but there is still just a bit of the bilberry juice there. So, we can look at this last row to see how the bilberry juice reacts when we add water to it. And on the top row, we can see how the bilberry juice reacts to the lemon and to the baking soda. And now, let's leave this paper here to dry and do the same with lingonberry. Then, let's take some lemon and see what happens when we add a few drops here where we've written lemon. Notice how that really dark violet starts to turn into this beautiful red. Do the same thing here. I've written lemon splashes, so let's see what happens. Look, quite a strong chemical reaction. It even starts to bubble there. And here, where I have lingonberry and lemon, I'll take a bit of baking soda from the jar and just with my fingertips sprinkle it on top. A bit like sprinkling salt with your fingers. It starts to bubble and turn grey. That's really interesting. 
So now, when it's just been done, it looks like this. Tomorrow it may look a bit different, and a week later it will look like this. Okay, let's make some coffee. We need three coffee scoops of coffee. This amount is based on my scientific tests. We then brew one deciliter of steaming hot coffee. If you're using instant coffee, you should add three teaspoons of instant coffee into a half deciliter of water. It'll be much darker than this filter coffee. Let it brew there. If you want, you can start painting human figures or whatever you want, especially if you are a more advanced artist. But now I'll show you a test that you should first try out. We need masking tape and an A4. These tests are like small squares. We create them by using the masking tape to tape the A4 to the table. I'll start with the filter coffee this time. I'll draw some stripes here. I'll take some of the instant coffee as well. As you can see right away, it's a lot darker than the filter coffee. Our berries and coffees work a bit like watercolors. Because the more water you add, the lighter the color. And the less water you have, the darker it is, and the less it spreads across this paper. Your imagination is the only limit here. You can also combine these. You could mix coffee, bilberry juice and lingonberry juice together. Nobody can tell you what's right or what's wrong. All right, now we can start adding lemon and baking soda. If you want to paint something more representational with coffee, you could use a pencil to sketch the outlines on the paper beforehand. I'm going to paint a mountain landscape here, and I'm starting with the lightest tones at the back. So just like with the aerial perspective, the sky there is the lightest and the mountains gradually get darker and darker and darker, and the front of the landscape is the darkest part. I'm taking some filter coffee and water and starting with this very light brown back there. If the color spreads into another layer, that's totally fine, because once the coffee has dried, you can wash some of it off. At this point, I'll take some of the darker coffee as well, the instant coffee. You don't have to have instant coffee, but you can use it if you want to. It instantly adds this really dark and pigmented tone to this work. I have some details here, like the trees. So first I paint the background. Once that's dry, I use dry and really dark coffee to paint the details on top, so that they are visible, the trees in this case. <laughs> so this is how it turned out. Now, let's make a treasure map. This is really easy to make. Take a piece of paper and crumble it up. Once you've crumbled it up, start pouring coffee on it. Spread coffee all over the paper. You can use your finger and your whole hand to really spread it everywhere. Crumble up the paper some more. 
Once the whole piece of paper is full of coffee, the creases start to stand out really nicely. You can then tear the edges carefully. You can tear around all the edges, then it will look like a really old treasure map or piece of paper. Then you can either use black marker to color around the edges, or even use this coffee to paint the edges darker. Once the paper is completely dry, you can use a black marker to draw some kind of treasure map or whatever you want on it. Now you know quite a lot about painting with berries and coffee, but you can also go ahead and try other materials. You don't always have to get it right the first time. Sometimes it is fun to just test different things. I wish you fun moments with this exercise. Be bold and try different things. And remember that anyone can do this, regardless of their age. Thank you for joining me for Art Friday. See you!